What is going on, Fight Fans? So here is the final episode of the three-part series of the fighters that we need, and I guess now slash fighters, legendary fighters that I want to see. And the reason I say that it's legendary fighters that I want to see, because I don't think at this point, and it's unfortunate, but it is the truth, I don't think at this point any of the old-timey legends will really move the needle uh, for this game to continue to be sold. Because if anyone is even interested in those type of legendary fighters, they will probably already be a boxing fan that is more than likely already interested in the game. To get that additional casual fan and and for and 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 more into and get more into the open market. The list that I, the two lists that I recently created, I think can definitely help move the needle. But without any further ado, here are the five legends that I want to see, old school legends that I want to see in ESBC. This is Edward, and you're watching Boxing Fanatico. <music> By no means am I saying that this list must happen. I just reiterated that in terms of selling, it's not a big deal. But also, in terms of my me wanting them to kind of fill in that legendary roster, it isn't a big deal to me either. They already have a lot of the legends that I really like. For example, Sugar Ray Robinson, Muhammad Ali, Jack Dempsey. So they have such a good chunk of, of legends. But these are the ones that are super interesting to me, and I would be additionally happy and excited if they added them, but of course, it's not a make or break. So let's get into the list with number five, Sonny Liston. Now, Sonny Liston didn't fight much, but he was a beast when he did fight. I believe his record is 50 and four, and one of his losses was a little bit early on in his career, and he avenged that loss incredibly fast, then went on a streak of just beating a bunch of guys and knocking people out, and then went up against the Olympic gold medalist, Cassius Clay at the time, who we now know him as Muhammad Ali, and lost that fight. And it was a shocker because this was the fight that proved that Muhammad Ali was the real deal. And then they did the rematch, and Muhammad Ali beat him again. So Muhammad Ali had his number, but just to show how good of a win it was for both of those fights for Muhammad Ali to win it, Sonny Liston didn't lose a fight for a long time after that. He continued to knock people out and run through the division. He just couldn't beat Muhammad Ali. He, that was the only person that he couldn't beat. And then at the tail end of his career, he had a loss. There is no shame in losing to a young Muhammad Ali. And I would love to see Sonny Liston in here because it brings that juxtaposition with Muhammad Ali. Although Muhammad Ali has a lot of rivals that you can kind of put together like a George Foreman and Joe Frazier, which is probably the best rival. And we have that in the game now. So really it's not a necessary thing, but it is an awesome addition to have Sonny Liston in the game. Now let's go ahead and move on to number four, Henry Armstrong with a record of, I believe 149 with 20 losses and 10 draws he was a multi-division champion beast before it was really even a thing to go up multiple divisions he was the first ever to go up three weight divisions and win titles world titles in those three divisions so he was the first to kind of pioneer that multi-level division uh, championship wins henry armstrong during his heyday was no joke and he would be an awesome addition he sparked everything we see now with people that are modern times multi-division like a manny pacquiao for example who's an eight division champion but henry armstrong did it when there were just like three or four divisions total. So for him to pull it off during that time where if you needed to move up to another division, the gap was super far is incredibly impressive. And I would love to see Henry Armstrong in eSports Boxing Club added as a legend. Now let's go ahead and move on to number three, Archie Moore with a record of 186 wins, 186 wins, 23 losses and 10 draws. This man could arguably be considered the most 
hard hitting fighter of all time. I know a lot of people think, you know, Deontay Wilder, he's hard hitting, and he is because of his KO percentage is super high. But Archie Moore knocked out more fighters than anyone in the history of boxing. Of his 186 wins, 141 of them were KOs, and that number is still the world record till this day. Not only that, but Archie Moore also holds the record for the longest reigning light heavyweight champion, world champion of all time, and this man fought professionally for nearly 30 years. This is what you call a beast of a beast. Has the longevity and the power to boot. It will be amazing to have Archie Moore in eSports Boxing Club. And I'll be ecstatic if he was in it. All right, let's go ahead and move on to number two. Now, number two and number one caters to my fighting style that I enjoy, uh, that I love to watch. I have a, a bias towards technical fighters. I, there's something about them that just, I, I appreciate that art. And I get, I thoroughly am, un, and I'm thoroughly entertained by a technical fight. As much as many people are entertained by knockout fights and stuff, and those are entertaining, don't get me wrong, but I'm thoroughly entertained by someone who can outsmart someone, uh, who can play chess in the ring. It entertains me. And these last two people kind of fit that mold, but I also, the interesting thing is I've never seen them in a boxing video game, and not seeing them in a game makes it more interesting to me. If I if I if I haven't seen you in a boxing video game before, I for for some reason it makes me more curious to see you in ESBC. Number 2 is going to be Nicolino Locke and he was an Argentinian fighter who had amazing defense. And in terms of amazing defense, he just had good reads and reaction times versus his opponents. He would keep his hands away from his face and slip punches just with his head without even moving his upper body much, just slipping slightly left and right, literally just timing everything that his opponent was doing. He was a defensive wizard. I mean, the man's record was 117 wins with four losses and 14 draws. He was an absolute genius in the ring and his style is weird and different and I would love to have him represented accurately uh, by some type of an actor, someone who could do what he did and put it in ESBC. That would be super fun to watch. His defense is absolutely mesmerizing. If you haven't seen him fight before, I highly recommend going online and watching some of his fights. Nicolino Locke was just a man that not only was he ahead of his time, what he did, you still don't really see that type of fighting style now. And number one, my second favorite all-time fighter, uh, right behind Sugar Ray Robinson and ESBC, you did your thing, you got Sugar Ray, so we're good there. <laughs> but behind Sugar Ray Robinson, and because I love defensive fighters, and his style was super, super uh, unorthodox in his defense, but it was incredibly effective, and that is Willie Pep. We have not seen Willie Pep in a boxing video game ever, ever to my knowledge. Correct me if I'm wrong, guys, but we've never seen him. But Willie Pep's defensive style, Nicolino Locke's defensive style was kind of bizarre and kind of weird and everything. Willie Pep's was completely unorthodox. He would dip his body in one direction, then step out in the opposite direction, creating massive confusion. It's something that's not done or taught, uh, especially in modern boxing. If you slip or dip to your left, for example, it makes more sense for you to step away in that direction because you're getting your body completely away. You already have your head away from the, the punches, then you just moving your body where your head is going and you're getting completely away from your fighter. For you to dip this way and then kind of step onto the other direction, that's super unorthodox, but that's what made his defense so elite. It was hard to read, hard to time, hard to understand. He gave you a hundred million different looks. You didn't know how to deal with Willie Pep. His defense was so good that there were rumors that he would win a round without even throwing a punch. Just by his ring generalship and making his opponent miss so much, 
that he wouldn't have to throw a punch and and he would win those rounds the validity of that we don't know but it's just that's the aura that's the atmosphere that he created with his defensive wizardry I mean, the man's record also speaks to how well his defense was. He was 229 wins with 11 losses and one draw. Willie Pep was absolutely a beast. One of my favorite fighters to watch. If you haven't seen a fight of Willie Pep, I highly recommend it. You will not be disappointed. So those are the top five people that I would like to see it's not top five people that I need to see, just top five people that I would like to see added to Esports Boxing Club of the legends of the old time black and white legends. And if they are added, that'll be fantastic. If they're not added, it's still okay. We still got a good uh, list of people. And I really lean a little bit more towards modern day fighters anyways, but it will still be an awesome added addition. That's it for today's list. This is Edward from Boxing Fanatico. And I'll see you next time.